Tim, last week we spoke about the limb conformation in horses and why it's so important. As a breeder, how soon after foaling should we have the conformation of our horses looked at? It's a good question because I think any owner uh, of, a, of a brood mare and a foal, many of them I think if they saw them the first few days after, after foaling would be um, horrified because many foals are weak and they're, they're ang the angles of their legs are, are in all directions. And sometimes those things are just a matter of time where the foal's weak and it needs a, f a feed and a bit of, a bit of rest after the foaling process and they, those legs will straighten up. Occasionally, if they're particularly bad and weak, sometimes they need splinting and you know, those, those cases are, un are pretty rare. When we normally start to see problems uh, in what we call normal angular limb deformity in foals is not until a few weeks of age and often you may have a foal that gets through that wobbly stage at the start, grows a little bit and then a month or six weeks into its growth it starts to throw a knee or you know it may, may ang have a valgus deformity of its knee which is angled outwards or a, or a, a fetlock and it starts to get to a point, and because those bones are really soft and they're starting to get active, if they're not corrected and they get past a certain point, they just get worse and worse. With the more simpler cases, what can we do to overcome these problems? Well, a lot of the cases are, are simple confinement and reducing the amount of um, loading that the limb has, because basically this is a, an injury that occurs due to a problem with the growth plate of the foal, where the, where the bone's growing from. And once it gets to a certain stage, it often will be that one side's growing faster than the other. And, and if, you, if you unload that limb by uh, boxing the horse for a short time, you can improve the, you know, the foal will correct itself. Now, involved with that at the same time, many people will use trimming the feet because they wear their feet out particularly badly and if you can trim the feet and keep that foot landing flat that's a really big advantage and further that w often extensions are used if, if you get into them early. The extensions and the trimming are more used to the lower part of the limb where the, there's often angles on the fetlocks. The time frame for correcting a, an angular fetlock is much shorter than the knee. You've got up to about two or three months to do a, a, a fetlock because the growth plates close earlier, so those are really quite critical to get going on those early. The uh, ones around the knee are much less um, critical, and, and I'm talking mainly for limbs here obviously, they're, they're by far the most important, um, but it, the same things occur in the back legs. So the, the higher um, growth plate above the knee, up to five, six months, is quite a bit of um, latitude to deal with that, and even later in some animals. How do studs manage the horse's growth within that first year for the ideal conformation of a horse? Well, I think most of them weigh, the, the better studs weigh, and they know, or they've got, they've got good stockmen that, that check the growth, and they want an even growth rate, basically. So it boils down to good nutrition, and nutrition of balanced minerals, um, and in New Zealand we're very fortunate, we've got a lot of what we consider as normal, absolutely perfect, feed for horses and that being uh, pasture. And I think that basically the best studs will monitor their, their growth rates of all their weanlings right through to yearlings and they know and they keep them on an even plane.